Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome to our April 12th, 2022 business meeting. A quorum has been established. I call the meeting to order. Would you please join me for a moment of silence at this time? Thank you. Following the agenda, the next thing on the agenda is the board chair announcements. Um, tonight, I would just like to uh, recognize a couple of groups of students who represented Warren County well uh, in, the, in the previous couple of weeks. The Space Force JROTC visited Washington, D.C. And I understand from a representative who, were, who was not involved in the school system that they represented us well. Excellent. Um, behavior as well as how they look in their uniform. And so we just want to say thank you very much for them um, doing a, a great job. And we appreciate um, your being there and representing us well. Also, on Saturday, um, Ms. Bird and I had the op opportunity to attend uh, a local event, Pink with Passion and our Warren County Marching Machine band uh, performed and they represented us well as well. So at this time I just wanna say thank you to the students for all that you're doing to represent yourself well as re well as the district. And um, to the staff, if you have students who are participating in things or doing things to represent us, please let us know. Uh, email any one of the board members so we can recognize you as well as attend if you have something that, that you would uh, care for us to attend. So we do appreciate that. <laughs> That's right. Very good. So in case you didn't hear it, the Warren County Middle School girls and boys won their first baseball and softball Excellent. game. So Excellent. congratulations to them as well. <laughs> Thank you. So please let us know. We would definitely like to uplift our young, our young scholars uh, with all that they're doing and let them know that we are very proud of them. Okay. Um, at this time, any other board members have any other comments that they would like to make? Share? Okay. No. Uh, we'll move on to the superintendent's update. No updates this evening at this time. Okay. <clears throat> Next, then, I call for a motion to approve tonight's agenda. I second. Motion to be properly made by Board Member Bird, second by Board Member Tally Brain, that we approve tonight's uh, regular board meeting agenda. Any questions? <coughs> Hearing none, would you vote please? Now by the voting sign of aye. 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 Ayes have it. Motion carries. Next we will, next I call for a motion to approve the consent agenda. Madam Chair. Go ahead. Okay. Madam Chair, I make a motion that we approve the consent agenda. Second. Motion's been properly made by Board Member Tally Brain, second by Board Member Bird, that we approve the consent agenda. Any discussion? Hearing none, would you vote please? Now by the voting sign of aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it, motion carries. <laughs> At this time, we will have special recognition um, by our superintendent. All right, good evening. Good evening. Uh, as has been in our usual and customary fashion uh, each month, it seems we have a set of employees to recognize, and this month is uh, no short, uh, shortage. Uh, this is, uh, last week was National System Principals Week. The National Association of Secondary School Principals, uh, the National Association of Elementary School Principals, and the American Federation of School Administrators 
have declared the week of April 4th through the 8th, uh, again, which was last week, as National Assistant Principals Week to honor and recognize the contributions of assistant principals to the success of students in schools across the U.S. The North Carolina Principals and Assistant Principals Association supports this effort and wishes to recognize all North Carolina assistant principals for the central role they play in leading schools in this state. We here at Warren County Schools also take this opportunity to recognize our assistant principals uh, and the tireless work that they do uh, in supporting our schools and supporting our principals uh, each and every day. We hope that everyone will join with us in celebrating the important work of assistant principals in leading North Carolina's public schools as well as those here uh, in Warren County. We recognize and salute you for the great job that you perform daily, not only during the week, but again, every day of the year. Mm -hmm. Are any of our assistant principals with us this evening? I don't see any. They're probably all still in their buildings working. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wherever you are, again, we salute Absolutely. you and thank you for your or hard work, and we have a small token for you uh, when we see you. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next on our agenda is public comment, and we do not have any uh, public comments tonight to share. So we'll move on to our action item. First action item for tonight is the transition of middle school grades from Northside K-8 to Warren County Middle School. And that will be presented by Superintendent. All right, so again, good evening. Um, we have been, bo been before you uh, starting last week, uh, two weeks ago at our last meeting uh, to present to you uh, our transition plan for moving our middle school grades from Northside K-8 uh, to Warren County Middle School. Uh, so I'll just briefly highlight some of those uh, goals, uh, pros and cons that we've talked about now in our last several meetings uh, and then um, bring, that rec bring our recommendation to you again. Uh, you see here the goals are providing uh, equitable access uh, to courses and other opportunities for our students. Uh, we feel that we can certainly uh, accomplish some more efficient operations uh, in our buildings, uh, but also, uh, and I think one of the most important pieces, uh, is uh, moving those students that are at Northside and having them in a more uh, age-appropriate location with other middle schoolers uh, uh, of their age uh, and grade level, which helps to prepare them for that transition to high school uh, by working on independence, uh, self-reliance, and the skills and competencies needed to be successful at the next level. Just a, a review of our brief timeline. Um, we brought this to you at our meeting two weeks ago. Uh, uh, that was Tuesday, March 22nd. Uh, on the 24th, two days later, we had a public information session where we shared that same information uh, with uh, public and the community uh, at Northside. Uh, that following week, on the 29th, uh, we held a public hearing here at Warren County Middle School in this very room uh, and allowed for parents and others to provide comment uh, to the board uh, on the proposed move or transition. Uh, last week, we launched a public survey uh, that was available uh, on Monday, April 4th. That ran through Friday, uh, April the 8th. Uh, and we had over, I think, about a, a, over 100 respondents uh, to that survey. That included family, uh, staff, uh, par families, parents, uh, families, staff, uh, and others uh, provided input on the website. And then, of course, we're here tonight uh, for you to make that decision on the recommendation. Just a little bit here with the uh, survey, there were 116 uh, responses. Uh, as you can see, it, it included students, uh, parents, uh, both employees of the district uh, who are also parents, uh, and then uh, others as well. Uh, and then, of course, uh, those in the community who are not parents. So we had uh, a, a wide swath of uh, participation and you can see the breakdown in terms of demographics of the respondents there. Uh, the, um, 
Results of that survey, as you can see here, were mixed. Uh, of the total number of respondents, which was 116, 45% uh, uh, approve of the move, 55% uh, disapprove of that. There were 10 students. You see among students, it's about a 50-50 uh, split, so students are fairly mixed uh, from uh, parents who are not employees, only 27% in favor of the move. Uh, and then if you look at our employees who are also parents, uh, those uh, which only, again, 10, 70% uh, approve, 30% disapprove, uh, and then employees who do not have kids in the system, uh, overwhelmingly 94% uh, approve. What you can see here uh, is that largely parents do not approve <coughs> of the move. Uh, employees do approve uh, of the move. Uh, and then the community uh, is about split. You see 46% approve, 54% uh, disapprove. So you can see here uh, students are fairly split. Uh, parents largely not in favor. Uh, employees largely in favor. Uh, and the community as a whole uh, seems mixed. Here you just see some of the reasons, again, for support and for that opposition. Uh, those in support, and we've talked about access uh, and equity to uh, courses and opportunities such as BAN, JROTC, uh, CTE, and other arts courses. Uh, again, the reasons being uh, preparing our middle school students for the transition to high school uh, and more efficient operations. Some of the concerns uh, being around class size at Warren County Middle School compared to Northside, uh, concern about uh, the culture and climate here at the middle school in terms of uh, discipline and behavior issues. Uh, some have a strong emotional attachment to Northside, uh, having had multiple students coming through, uh, others that may have attended uh, even years ago themselves, uh, and then also concern about the continuity of the Spanish uh, immersion program that is being currently offered uh, at the uh, at Northside. Some other considerations that we've looked at in terms of uh, uh, travel, uh, the availability of counselors and support, uh, social emotional support, and learning for uh, students here uh, at the at the middle school. Also, issues around uh, well not an issue, but in terms of building more community unity uh, and support by having. Uh, all middle school students on one campus. Uh, some of the cons, again, some anticipated costs associated with name change uh, and the transition. Uh, and uh, by transitioning those middle school grades, uh, we would then have only one middle school as opposed to, to two. Obviously, there's some impact on staffing in terms of loss of teachers. Uh, that is minimal. We're looking at about 100 to 120 students uh, being transitioned. Uh, that's about uh, three uh, teachers. Uh, so in, ter in terms of a net saving, we would lose uh, one middle school teacher uh, at, at Northside, but that would reduce some of our staffing challenges in terms of having to recruit staff uh, for both Northside and middle school and could focus our recruitment efforts uh, at one school uh, here at Warren County Middle School where we've had an excellent uh, uh, um, effort in terms of maintaining those positions here at Warren County Middle School. There have been no vacancies here for the last year, maybe going on two years. Uh, also, uh, we've had quite a bit of success in recruiting and retaining certified teachers, particularly in our core courses uh, as well. And so we feel like uh, we've got a, a stronger uh, core of teachers, if you will, to provide the support and instruction needed for our middle school students uh, here at Warren County Middle. Uh, and so again, with, the, uh, with more students, uh, more courses, uh, we're able to really focus our efforts uh, on recruiting and staffing uh, here at one campus uh, and not having to recruit for both middle school and elementary school <laughs> teachers uh, at Northside can focus on elementary teachers at Northside and middle school teachers uh, uh, here. Uh, some of the, the sort of myths versus realities, if you will, um, 
thought that the average class size would be smaller at Warren County Middle School than, than Northside. Uh, we do believe that because we will have uh, more teachers here, the class sizes will be uh, a bit smaller uh, at Warren County Middle School, therefore allowing for a little bit more uh, individualized and personalized instruction, the ability to build better relationships uh, with students here at the middle school. Uh, we do believe that our students will be better prepared uh, for high school, both academically uh, and socially. Uh, Northside has about 400, 425 students, roughly 75 to 80 middle school students or middle, middle school students uh, in those grades. So you have those students moving around in what is largely an, uh, an elementary school environment. Uh, we think that, that they would be better prepared, uh, better suited, and, and suited for success if they are in a middle school cohort of students uh, where they are uh, changing classes uh, with each other, uh, involved in the same extracurricular uh, activities and opportunities. Uh, they're also already here on the campus with the uh, high school, and so therefore better synergy and better preparing them for that transition from Warren County Middle School to Warren County High School. Uh, and lastly, uh, that the school has implemented, and we're working very hard uh, to address the issues uh, around discipline and behavior. We know that we've had some challenges here at Warren County Middle School. Those challenges uh, do continue, uh, but we have had an aggressive approach, uh, particularly focusing on um, <coughs> the multi-tier systems of support of what we know as MTSS, uh, other social emotional learning uh, uh, objectives and, and competencies that we are addressing. Uh, we have addressed local uh, policies here both at the school and district-wide policies uh, to address suspensions uh, and behavior uh, and have, again have, have taken some very aggressive steps uh, to address the culture and climate here uh, and you have our commitment uh, both that of the district and the team uh, as well as Dr. Carrington mm -hmm. uh, to continue uh, addressing uh, those issues directly uh, and head on, and we know that a continued commitment to those uh, things will make a difference. <coughs> and so to close, uh, our recommendation uh, to you tonight uh, is to reassign uh, those students that are currently fifth, sixth, and seventh graders uh, at Northside and reassign those students to Warren County Middle School uh, effective for the 2022-2023 school year. So with that, Madam Chair, uh, we turn it over to you, and if there's any questions uh, from the board. Okay. Um, so before I, I move to having um, the board members to um, give the rationale for what, what they plan to vote for, uh, are there any questions? I think I'm good. Okay. So at this time, I'll have um, each board member to um, give about a minute, take about a minute to um, say why you feel um, you want, what, how, why, whether you support the transition or not support the transition. And I'll start. Um, so, uh, in 2014, when we, when the county decided to make Northside a K-8, uh, I was actually a part of the superintendent's parent advisory committee, and I was one of those parents who traveled around um, the, the state of North Carolina as well as out of state to look at different K-8 models to see if that would be a great fit for Warren County. And at the time, we did think it would be um, a good fit. It would. Um, give us, uh, give the students some continuity as far as staying at the school longer, as well as gave those parents an option who didn't want to uh, be traditional. Uh, we gave that option of year-round versus traditional. So when we had those choices of option, that was one of the other reasons I think we made Northside uh, a K-8 school. What I like to say is my, my child, uh, my son, actually was in the first graduating class at Northside, so he was one of those students who went to Northside when it first started as a sixth grader. And he was an eighth grader when they had that first graduating class. Um, one of the things that I can say about that, and, and we enjoyed it for the most part, however, in the three years that he was at Northside, um, 
only one of those years that he have a certified math teacher. Mm. And I know we still have that problem. And the problem with that is that that truly affected my son when he got to high school. Um, he's, he was not the strongest math student to start with. And then to go two years with a substitute, it probably took him two years um, to his sophomore, second semester, sophomore, maybe junior year, to recover from that. And so for me, not only is it personal, it is that as I'm, as I'm sitting here as a board member, I have to look out for all of the students and what I think is best for the students. And because I've lived that, that is um, one of the things that I, I use to determine my vote um, when, we, when we decide um, whether or not we need to make that move. <coughs> So um, just wanted to share that as far as my perspective goes. And we'll move to my right. OK. As a board member and a former teacher, I want to make certain every student is afforded equal opportunity to explore what it is that sparks their curiosity about the world and what it is that ignites their passion about the world so that we, as a district, can help them grow into the best versions of themselves. And as a county resident, I want to make certain our school district makes a valuable contribution to the quality of life as well as the economic well-being of our community. As a result, I think merging all middle grades into one school has the capacity to meet both these goals. So I will vote for it. I'm going to also add to what has been said that we all know that education is very important for our students. And our goal is to make sure that each one of our students get a very good education. I thought about what I should say to the parents who have concerns. And sometimes in life, we don't always see the bigger picture of what lies ahead. Together, we can move in a new direction to support and help Warren County Schools prosper. We were once little people ourselves, and our parents had to face some of the same challenges we are facing today. You are loving and caring parents who want the best for their children. We can do this together. Yes, we can. I say to all, change is constant. Change is good. Give change a chance. Thank you so much, Ms. Reardon. Um, I'll just, uh, first of all, I'd just like to say that I'm a middle school teacher. That's my heart. That's where I spend most of my time. And I'm very um, concerned about this move because, number one, I think it gives our students more opportunities, more opportunities to, to, to have advanced courses. And this is what they need, <coughs> have um, certified teachers. I have also been asked on several occasions, and this was prior to me coming as a member of the board, to tutor students from Northside in the area of mathematics. And, you know, it, it was really, you know, disturbing to, to know that, and the students would come to me and say, well, we don't have a teacher. Mm -hmm. And I have, you know, tutored several students in that area. Um, the Lead and Me program, which is in instituted at the middle school, is a good program, and I'm looking forward to the students being part of that. I want to leave this thought with you. If we work hard in silence, then success will make the noise. Mm. So we have to work hard. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Long. I think that was very powerful. And I, I too, um, sit here as a board member, and uh, also I started my career as a math teacher, <laughs> and my background is middle grades math, and so I'm a little bit torn 
um, because I am a graduate from Warren County High School and I went to Northside, I attended Northside, but I also attended the middle school. And I can remember when we transitioned um, from John Graham, I believe it was, I went to North Warren first, then John Graham, and they were building the middle school. And we were so happy to walk through those doors as sixth graders, I was a sixth grader when I came through those doors, to be in a new building that was colorful, was a, it was really colorful, and we were just excited. And so I guess, I guess my thought process is, is I was not prepared totally when I went to college. And I think we could have done a little bit of a better job with providing certified teachers across curriculums. And so with that being said, I too feel like um, we need to pull all of our resources together so that we can provide the best education possible for all students. And then I think about how the parents feel because I looked at the survey and I saw that the majority of them, you know, were a little bit on the not wanting to merge side. And I thought about, I think their focus was the climate and culture. I've heard so many times from the parents, climate and culture. And I would have to say that we have dynamic teachers, I believe, in both Northside and the middle school. But since I've been on this board, the climate and culture has changed at the middle school, I believe. And I think, it's a, I think they do a really good job with you know, dealing with discipline. So I would say to you all, um, you know, to, the, to some of my fellow board members that I, I, I kind of mimic what you guys are saying and, and say that we do have to do a very good job with providing equity across the board. So that's where I am with, with my thought process. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you all um, fellow board members. I appreciate those comments. At this time, I call for a motion to um, transition the middle grades from Northside K-8 to Warren County Middle School effective the 22-23 school year. Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion that the board approve the recommendation to trans uh, transition the middle school the grades um, 6th, 7th, and 8th, and some 5th graders will be moving on from Northside K-8 to Warren County Middle School, effective the 2022-2023 school year. Madam Chair, I second. Motion's been properly made by Board Member Long, second by Board Member Tally Brain, that we uh, approve the motion that we transition the students' uh, grade 6, 8 grades from Northside K-8 to Warren County Middle School beginning the 22-23 school year. Any question? Hearing none, would you vote please? Now by the voting sign of aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it, motion carries. Madam Chair, I wanna thank all of our community, parents, uh, faculty employees for your participation uh, and not just a survey uh, but the public hearing uh, and the parent information session uh, we know that this is a uh, challenging and difficult decision for some but we ask for everybody to come together uh, and work with us uh, so that we can uh, make this transition successful for all of our students and stakeholders involved we look forward to working with you and we ask for your continued input uh, as we do want to hear uh, your thoughts and how we can work uh, together as a community uh, to make all of our schools better in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Our next action item is to discuss or vote on the 22-23 instructional calendar. That will be presented by our Chief Academic Officer, Ms. Kimberly Scott. Good 
afternoon. Um, I'm standing before you this afternoon to bring you the draft calendars um, for approval for the 2022-23 school year. Um, during the month of February and March, the district calendar committee met twice. Um, there was representation of all stakeholders. We also conducted two surveys, um, one community-based and one school-based to get feedback prior to coming up with a draft for this school year. The parameters in which we were building our calendar was based upon the state guidelines of that we could not start school no earlier than the Monday closest to August 26, and we had to be out of school by um, June the 10th, or the Friday closest to June 10th. We also have to have a minimum of 185 days or a minimum of 1,025 hours of instruction per year, and nine teacher work days, two vacation days, and a minimum of 10 annual leave days. One of the um, surveys that we sent out, our teachers indicated that they wanted us to look at going from a six-week period to a nine-week period. So once we received, and that was actually with the first survey, so when the team met on the second meeting, we began to discuss that. And after talking to the team, and well as I'm um, sharing that with Mr. Sutton, we came to the conclusion to send a staff survey out to get feedback from them to see how many were four six weeks, how many were four nine weeks, and the survey results are up on the screen for you. We have 76.5% of our staff that is in agreement with going to nine weeks. And some of the responses which I have shared with you during the presentation indicates that they feel like that they can better reach the needs of the students. They feel like they will have more time to work with them and work on the standards during a longer period of time versus the six weeks. One of the questions that came up was concerning notification of parents. So um, the team discussed that and we came to a consensus that instead of doing one progress report, report, they will now do a progress report every three weeks, which will be two progress reports per nine weeks and then the report card. Parents also have the opportunity to, um, to sign up for Parent Portal, which they can keep up with their um, students' grades consistently throughout the nine weeks period as well as we would continue with our parent-teacher conferences, which are also indicated in the calendar drafts for both the traditional and the early college calendar. This is a draft of the traditional calendar, and this has been on the website, as I indicated earlier, to get feedback from all stakeholders. Um, you will notice in this calendar that our students will be in, a, in school 179 days, but they will be in school more than the 1,025 hours of instruction. Our school dis, um, system uses hours of instruction versus the days, and that way when we have inclement weather, we can have banked hours where it will not interfere with our instructional hours. Um, the start date for the traditional calendar will be on August 29th, and the last day will be June 9th, 2023. Okay, so when we look at early college, early college will actually start, because they're on a different schedule from us, on August 10th, and their last day will be May 24th. And they will also be using the nine weeks calendar and doing the progress supports as well. Any questions? I guess. Yes, ma'am. Um, so you're saying that we, we bank hours, not days? Yes, ma'am. Is mm -hmm. that new? Is that? No. How long has that been going on? Is it called on? clock hours? Is that what you're saying? Ma'am. Is it called clock hours like it used to be? Instructional hours. Instructional. Yes, ma'am. So mm -hmm. instead of us doing days, we do hours and um, like Miss Buffalo keeps up with how many hours we have. So like if we have an early release or inclement weather, um, it's like each school based upon their start time and their end time, those hours are banked each day. Okay, that's relatively new, new is why I asked. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I know it's been since I've been in the district, so I don't know if someone other can speak to that. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then secondly, do we have a list of the team that is, you said that you had a team of stakeholders. Yes, we can um, share that list with you. I don't have it available okay. um, right now, but I can get that list to you. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. As a matter of fact, Ms. Clayton have all the sign-in sheets for that, those meetings. And you did say this was on the website, right? Yes. Right. It ran in February and March. Mm -hmm. It was on the main page. Mm -hmm. Just to go back to uh, Vice Chair Lamb and your question uh, about the hours. You'll see here in this document the, um, all the considerations uh, that we have to meet in terms of the requirements for mm -hmm. the school calendar. Ms. Scott talked about these things earlier in terms of when we can start the year, uh, when we finish the year. The state also gives us, um, and I can't tell you the exact year when this law was changed, but we, we have, you'll changed. see number five, it's a minimum of 185 days or 1,025 hours. Mm -hmm. So we can either track the, the amount of instructional time, again, by day or by hours in a day. So that involves looking at the start time, bail, the bail schedule mm -hmm. of each school, looking at when bell rings, when we, we bail out, uh, and in each of those, how many hours uh, we track. So we keep track of the hours per, per day, total those at the end of the year. And so the, the decision was made prior to my getting here that we would track based on the number of hours versus okay. um, the day. So, and that's what Scott said. So when you have instances of inclement weather and we only need to close school for a couple of hours as opposed to an entire day or what have you, it gives us a little bit more flexibility uh, when we're tracking by hours and we can add or take away hours versus entire day, half day, or what have you. Thank you. I mean, I understand. I'm glad to hear it because it used to be by days. Yeah. <laughs> and we didn't have that flexibility. Mm -hmm. uh, Ms. Scott, my question is, and, I, and I'm relaying a question that I've, I've been asked several times by several staff members, if you could just kind of speak to the reason that, and I think uh, Board Member Tally Brain brought it up in one of the other meetings, the reason that staff development days are Thursdays <laughs> and then they come back to work on Fridays? Um, yes, and I'm just going to be transparent um, because based upon the feedback that was given prior to us um, and in talking to some of the principals that they feel like if it was on a Friday, we might not have the mm -hmm. staff here for the PD. So that is why the PDs are scheduled on Thursday. Okay. We appreciate the transparency. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Because we, I, I know I've been asked that a lot. That. Yeah, we. No, so, I understand that. Yeah, yeah, I do too. So, totally thank understand you. it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Just a couple of other things. Thank you. Just a couple other things to highlight. I think most people know, but those that are tuning in that may not, we have two calendars: the traditional calendar, again, is our normal, uh, traditional academic year. The early college calendar. The reason that calendar starts early. Uh, because the early college, of course, partners with Vance Granville Community College. Uh, and so in that, we operate off of Vance Granville's uh, uh, calendar. And so students start a little bit uh, uh, earlier uh, and get out of school a little bit earlier uh, because they're on the community college calendar or schedule and not the traditional K-12 school, school calendar. Um, the other thing I wanted to, to note, uh, again, Ms. Scott touched on it, uh, this calendar does represent a transition from uh, a nine week, from a six week grading period okay. to a nine week grading period. Uh, uh, and while that does not represent a significant change in terms of operation and how we do business, uh, it does change to some degree uh, the uh, uh, assessment time, time for planning, uh, um, when report cards come out and that sort of thing. So that's the, the major change, if anything, that you'll see in this calendar uh, is that shift from a nine week, from a six week to uh, a nine week grading period as she alluded to. Um, uh, this is one that many of our uh, faculty and employees uh, asked for. We wanted to uh, support that, uh, support them in that uh, because it does allow more time for 
uh, planning, grading, uh, assessments, and, and that sort of thing. Uh, but we're also asking our teachers and, and administrators to make sure uh, that you are working uh, and stand in contact and connection with parents uh, so that they are able to track the progress uh, of their students uh, so that there is not, uh, there is a longer amount of time uh, when they may see assessments and uh, things of that nature. So that means that we have to work just a little bit harder to make sure that parents are in the loop mm -hmm. uh, and that they are staying connected uh, with teachers and their students so they can uh, be in touch with the performance of their individual students. So just wanted to note those two things. Okay, if there are no other questions or comments, at this time I call for a motion to approve the uh, traditional as well as Warren Early College calendars for the 22-23 school year. Madam Chair, I make a motion that we approve the 2022-2023 instructional calendars, both traditional and early college. Second. Motion's been properly made by Vice Chair Lehman, second by Board Member Long board member Bird, excuse me, that we approve the um, proposed 22-23 calendar, instructional calendars for both early, early college and the traditional calendar. Any questions? Hearing none, would you vote please? Now by the voting sign of aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it, motion carries. Next we have, next action item is the approval of the tech, Teach Tech U contract. And we have our new finance officer, Ms. Ajijo, coming good to evening, present. Good evening, good, good evening. Good evening. All right, I come for you today to bring the Teach Tech U contract. We've been working with Therrington Smith to develop a new standardized contract template um, that we're going to use going forward with all vendors that are seeking to do business with Warren County Schools. Um, this particular contract seeks to update the previously approved agreements to the new contract format and it clarifies some language regarding the scope of work proposed by Teach Tech U. Um, Teach Tech U provides management of the virtual academy, development of proposed innovative learning labs, and consultative services related to the role of the Chief Technology Officer. Um, the fiscal implications is that the contract will not exceed $162,113, and we recommend it to go for it for the board approval. If there is a, any question? You know, I, and we do have a version that doesn't have the edits on it. Ms. Odijo, can I just ask for a point of clarification? Mm -hmm. I, I noticed before there was a Word document with some track changes. Have those all been accepted in those the PDF version? Those have all been PDF accepted, version? And there is okay. a finalized document. I've got hard copies at, okay. if you need to pass those out, but. Um. I think as long as board members have reviewed the Word document and are aware that a yeah. motion, We've, the recommendation we, is to approve it with those changes as marked. If I'm not mistaken, it's, the, cal it's the, the contract pretty much that we accepted before we're just putting it on a template. Yes, now. it's on a form template. Um, it has some standard language for like background checks, the Jennifer Lunsford. There's just some compliance issues okay. and the funding out clause and things that are required by the LGC that okay. the original contract didn't have. So we typically have a template that's been approved by our legal um, counsel that has all of that standard canned language in there, so to mm -hmm. speak. And we ask that most vendors use that because that keeps us covered. And you know, every contract is the same and has all the same terms and agreements. Perfect, perfect. And that's great because I think we haven't been doing that, have, having a standard. So mm -hmm. we appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, we are doing a, a good bit of work, sorry, to, to standardize our process, uh, implement some new systems and put some things in place that uh, make sure that we are compliant on all levels uh, and working with our vendors and that there's some consistency uh, across the board. Uh, as, as has been indicated, 
all track changes and everything has been approved. I would ask for approval pending any final uh, approvals by both the finance department and legal counsel uh, as they review this. But uh, we're bringing this to you uh, tonight to, to update this contract again and pending any sort of final approvals or revisions from both counsel and our finance department. Hey, I think mm -hmm. I, one question, Madam Chair. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. um, are these funds coming out of strictly the ESSA funds, which are federal funds only, or are they are different? That, how are we going to pay for it? All, all of these funds are coming from uh, okay. our pandemic recovery funds. Right. Again, the, the three areas that this uh, contract focuses on, uh, uh, provides focus to, is one, the virtual academy, which we have run that last fall, mm -hmm. and that has continued through the spring of this year through June 30. Uh, and so with that, uh, federal funding was provided uh, to help, again, provide instruction to our students uh, during and after the pandemic. Uh, the uh, Innovative Learning Lab, we're working through that piece, but again, that will be uh, primarily two-year work designed to help us continue to address the challenges that we've seen both among students and staff as we transition to uh, a more digital uh, learning age and learning space, if you will, uh, and then uh, the, the part where with the consultative services, we feel strongly that because of the amount of focus on our technology needs, everything from the implementation and the, and the deployment of new devices, uh, both laptops, uh, uh, Wi-Fi hotspots, but also the training of our teachers, developing uh, new learning innovative styles for our students, uh, that we need a, a role of a chief technology officer and so we are also com contracting with Teach Tech U to provide those consultative services to help us think through how we are uh, improving uh, digital instruction and innovation uh, in the district. So all of those things are being utilized through uh, our recovery funds uh, to help in that over the next uh, two years. If we go through those and we see where uh, this is helping us to, to a point where uh, we're looking at a more permanent uh, uh, source. Mm -hmm. Then we would look at perhaps local funds or hopefully have some additional state funding. Mm -hmm. uh, but all of, the, all of the funding for this is coming through our pandemic recovery money at this time. So let me ask this crazy question, Superintendent Sutton. Mm -hmm. Should we, you know, you guys have done, you guys have went over this in the last um, meeting too, so I'm very familiar with it. Um, however, should we have done an RFP because we are dealing with federal funds? And the reason why I'm just asking because when, you, when I hear federal funds, the first thing that comes to my mind because I do that on you know day to day stuff. Should there have been an RFP that was sourced out first and gotten bids before we just decided? And I'm just asking because I don't know. When I hear federal funds, I, I, you know, the alarms go out for me, and I'm wondering, um, have we done our due diligence with um, comparing, um, you know, how we spending our money? Um, you know, when we started out with this work, particularly in the biggest part of the biggest chunk of this, if you will, is around the virtual academy uh, yeah. work, and um, that we we we. We did our due diligence and what was available to us, I think, at that time. Uh, we were, at that point, uh, mid-July, late July. School was three weeks away from starting, and we had no option to provide a virtual academy mm -hmm. uh, for our students. Um, and and uh, um, in our defense, we, uh, as a district, I just started at, at the 1st of July, mm -hmm. um, the, the work to uh, address the learning gaps and options as our students were return, returning and we were hoping to provide or looking for a way to provide uh, a safe transition and learning option for our students. Uh, some of that work had not been done uh, in those months yeah. prior to just given the transition uh, in the leadership of the district. Uh, and so at that time we, we had to find what was available to us, particularly as a smaller district. Um, so we did our due diligence in one looking at what districts our size versus mm -hmm. larger districts uh, were doing. Some of the larger districts uh, created their own virtual academy right. and employed their own right. staff and hired 
virtual academy principals mm -hmm. uh, and teachers. Uh, within we their certainly right were in a position to to do that. That that you we don't think not, so. I think that would have been difficult for us to afford to do, okay. given our size and just the, the scale. And so what many districts did that were similar to us in size, contracted out in a similar fashion mm -hmm. and contracted with some other companies. And you've got only a few companies that sort of do this kind of work. So this is, uh, I think, some very nuanced or niche type uh, uh, work. Many of those companies already had uh, mm -hmm. all the clients they could stay in. Uh, I even went to a couple of districts nearby and said, hey, could we partner and create a regional virtual academy mm. working with Vance and Grambling and some others? Uh, but because we were sort of late in the game and mm -hmm. the planning at that time, many of them had started back in March, April, May, okay. working on and developing their virtual academy. So you had other companies that provided this work were already locked in in contracts. Districts were already uh, months ahead in mm -hmm. their planning, uh, and we just kind of found ourselves on the short side uh, of the field, if you will, and so we didn't have very many options uh, at, at that point. Um, we thought that we found a gym uh, in Teach Tech U uh, and, and someone who um, had experience with this kind of work, uh, not so much in the virtual academy space, because uh, they were new and uh, uh, up and coming, uh, but they had the capacity to take on us as a client, uh, and, and we were in need, uh, and so that was sort of how we got okay. there. So long, long answer to your, to your question uh, in terms of an RFP. Uh, we, we didn't have the, the, the time or the ability, I think, to do, it, do an RFP uh, at that time, uh, and, I, and I do think, and our CFO and, and council can hold me to it, there are certain instances in our statute, I believe, when it comes to uh, the ability to single source uh, a contractor, and I think we were in that threshold that we were able to, to do that, okay. but um, I'm, I, I'm open to staying corrected if I'm, if, if, if I'm incorrect in that assessment, but okay. uh, given the conditions just, at, just, that, yeah, at that point. I just wanted to make sure that we were covered, you know, because yeah. I know you, you were just getting here and I know you had to find some sort resources, but giving you the benefit of the doubt, you know, that, because that's typically when I hear about federal funds, that's where my mind goes. Mm -hmm. I can assure you that some of the processes and procedures that have been put in place will ensure that any contract that meets a certain threshold does go out for bid and gets the proper um, quotations, it, notably with federal funds. No, you did mention that you had copies of the contract. Yes, I do. I would like to have <laughs> one. Awesome, I'll definitely. I guess I will. <laughs> Any other questions? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I can ask you. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I know how to ask the question, but I'm reading number four. Talk so to the mic. There, is there a cap to it? So when I'm reading in paragraph four, provider shall provide school system with invoices and this is from March 31st on. So is there a cap to what they can itemize from here on out? Thank you. Because I don't know that it, is there a cap to the contract? Mark, like the can I look? Thank you. Sure, so the question is just, is there a cap to what the expenditures would be? Yes. Yeah, so we typically advise including that. I'm scrolling down to the- um, Indeed there is. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I'm looking at the PDF yeah. version, which is new. Uh, that is going to be in item two, 2.1, on page two. Um, the cap for the entire second semester is $162,113. Okay. Oh, there Not it is. to exceed. Okay. I, see I see it. it. I didn't see that. Thank okay. you. Mm -hmm. And that's for the whole semester. semester. Yes, all this, the second semester. That includes base management, graduation coaching, virtual teachers, um, IT support, and some of the consulting services related to that CTO. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Hearing none, I call for a motion to approve the contract for Teach Tech U for second semester. Madam Chair, go ahead. 
Madam Chair, I make a motion that we approve the Warren Teach Tech U service contract um, for second semester. Second. Motion's been properly made by Vice Chair Lehman, second by Board Member Byrd, that we approve the Teach Tech U contract for second semester. Any question? Hearing none, would you vote please? Now by the voting sign of aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it, motion carries. Thank you. Um, Ms. Ojijo, will you be presenting the NEMA contract? I next? will. Um, so the NEMA contract um, is, we're also updating the original NEMA agreement um, with our new contract template that includes all of the language and the terms and the conditions um, that are required. NEMA provides facility assessments and strategic planning for project management with the goal of developing a long-term capital improvement plan for the Warren County Schools. Um, this contract is not to exceed $76,230, um, and we would like to request um, the board to approve this one. And I think, yeah. <laughs> I just, can I make one point of clarification? Absolutely. Mr. G. Joe, so I'm looking at paragraph four, and I'm seeing the provision about compensation, and I see a rate for increments of 16 hours of consulting services, and then a few lines down, I see an amount not to exceed $76,230 plus agreed upon reimbursable expenses. I Indeed. <laughs> so what we noticed in the contract is the prints, the actual blueprinting, um, was charged so and that's at rate so we don't necessarily know we've agreed to pay those reimbursable expenses in the original contract but there is no way to predict those ahead of time I believe that all the prints have been done but in the event that there is another photocopy or something it should be minimal 50 to 100 dollars um, what we were able to track and going through all of them, it was like $131 in all for those reimbursable expenses. So the only agreed upon re reimbursable expenses is the actual cost of the FedEx mailings and printouts. But we don't know yet what that no. might be. Um, Superintendent Sutton, you may be able to speak to the reports if you've gotten all the reports or if there will be additional prints to be anticipated. I, I, we, we, we've received all that we anticipate. Uh, I don't know that there would be any more. Um, I, I think we're, uh, council is going to, if we need to extend that cap just a little bit to allow for some additional room, uh, but leave that up to, to you if it needs to be the exact amount at 76 or if we would. I think my limited knowledge of the scope of the contract doesn't give me what I need to really make an assessment. I would say that legal counsel should tell us sure. what so they my, feel. My, my recommendation would be that you have a firm cap in your contract and that way the board is authorizing expenditure of up to a certain amount of funds. Um, mm -hmm. So what, what you might consider if the board is in favor of making a motion to adopt this contract with the idea from Ms. Ojiji, which makes complete sense that we have a general sense that we're talking about $150 for the cost yes. of the plans. We have no reason to anticipate that there will be a dramatic increase mm -hmm. in that cost. So what you might move for is approval of the contract for expenditure of $76,230 and reimbursement costs for the plans not to exceed, may we say, $300? I think, I think, I feel that's acceptable. And that way you're, you're specifying in your motion mm -hmm. that we're approving a modification to this contract so following approval of the motion I can modify that contract to state that specifically so you'd be approving expenditure of seventy six thousand two hundred thirty dollars for the services described in here and no more than three hundred dollars for reimbursement of printing costs Indeed. Okay. any other questions any other questions Okay. Hearing none, I call for a motion to accept the contract for NEMA, not to exceed 76230 76, and reimbursement expenses not to exceed $300 for printing costs. Do you want me to make it? Mm-hmm. Okay, Madam Chair, I make a motion that we approve the NEMA contract 
for $76,230 and reverse, with reimbursement expenses not to exceed $300. Second. Motion's been made by Vice Chair Layman, second by Board Member Long, that we approve the contract for NEMA. Any discussion? Hearing none, would you vote please? Now by the voting sign of aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carries. The final contract we have to approve will be the Carolina Solar Services. Yes. So the Carolina Solar Services contract relates to the Warren County High School roof repair that was approved on uh, June the 8th. Um, this particular company utilizes a team of five solar technicians over the course of two weeks to remove and reinstall the solar panel, panel array equipment on the roof of Warren County Schools. They take it off so the roof could be repaired and they reinstall it. The fiscal implications of this contract is $74,972 and we are bringing that forward for board approval. And, and this work has been completed. Fantastic. Good. <laughs> that includes the, the removal and installation of the panels and the, of course, subsequent roof work that was done that had nothing to do with this contract. This was just simply the removal and reinstallation right. of the solar panel. And just to make one correction, Ms. Ojijo said Warren County Schools is actually Warren County High School. High School. High School. Warren County High School. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Madam Chair, I make a motion that we accept. Um, the Carolina Solar Services. Second. Motion been properly made by Board Member Tally Brain, second by Board Member Bird. that we accept the uh, Carolina Solar Services contract not to exceed $74,972. Any discussion? Hearing none, would you vote please? Now by the voting sign of aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carries. Do you have a question? Mm -mm. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. At this time, I call for a motion to convene into closed session. Madam Chair, I move the board for the board to convene in closed session pursuant to General Statute 143-318. Point eleven A one A five and A six to prevent the disclosure of confidential personnel information and student information per general statute one fifteen C dash three nineteen and the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act twenty USC one two three two G and to consult with the board attorney and preserve the attorney client privilege pursuant to 143-318.11A3. I say. Okay. <laughs> right. Motion's been properly made by Vice Chair Layman, second by Board Member Tally Brain, that we convene into closed session. Any discussion? Hearing none, would you vote please? Now by the voting sign of aye. 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 Opposed? Eyes have it. Motion carries. We will convene into closed session at 715.
We're back into open session now. I call for a motion to adjourn the meeting. Oh no, I'm sorry, approve the personnel report. Madam Chair, I make the motion that we approve the personnel report. I second. Motion's been properly made by Vice Chair Lehman, second by Board Member Tally Brain that we approve the personnel report. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, would you vote please? Now by the voting sign of aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it, motion carries. Now I call for a motion to adjourn the meeting. Madam Chair, I make a motion that we adjourn this meeting. Second. <laughs> Motion's been properly made by Board Member Tally Brain, second by Board Member Long that we adjourn tonight's meeting. Question? Hearing none, would you vote please? Now by the voting sign of aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Ayes have it, motion adjourn meeting adjourned. <laughs>